We've got yet another great Native American artifact, a weapon, of course, to look at. This is from the Blackfoot or Blackfeet. It is a knife with a sheath, as you can tell, and obviously the calling card here is the extensive use of brass tacks. I've talked in other videos about how popular this decorating motif was with Native Americans, uh, and not just on leather work like this. The three pins holding the scales in place obviously match the color scheme and you get that overall brown and gold look, which is really awesome. Let's take a look at the knife itself. It's obviously my hand. It's a very sturdy, workmanlike blade. It uses a simple butcher outline. Definitely sharp and uh, pretty typical of what you'd see from the time and place. This was uh, circa 1880 and it's a good piece of work. Could definitely come in handy in a fight, although it was, you know, on a daily basis used as a utility knife, I'm sure. Here are some Blackfoot warriors and definitely the best picture I could find. It's a really stunning piece of work by the photographer here. The Blackfoot were a plains people. Nomadic hunters, as you can imagine. A lot of bison hunting. This is where the Blackfoot Reservation today is located. And yeah, basically they were in Montana and adjoining parts of Canada and controlled a wide swath of territory at one point. Not the best picture, but it's the only one I have of the actual edge, so there you go. Like I said, what you would expect, what you see commonly in knives from this era in the frontier. I talked about how this could be a fighting knife when the need called for it, and the Blackfoot were warriors. Uh, they were nomadic in terms of hunting, uh, but also in terms of war. They would uh, go on expeditions across hundreds of miles. And the handle here is coffin-shaped, but it's not as angular as you usually get with that outline. How about that detail? This is a commercial leather. For those of you knowledgeable enough to say, this doesn't look like it was made out, you know, on the frontier from scratch, uh, if you will. Because, yeah, this is surely a trade item. And here's a very similar antique. I'll let you know this was a popular configuration or design. How popular? Well, I definitely can't say. But some quick searching for similar images uh, convinced me it was definitely a thing, right? This one, not as close of a match, but you can still see the same overall concept. Both of these are left in the dust by ours when it comes to the extensive use of the brass. And one last one, really different, but again, showing the popularity of using the tacks in that way. These tacks or buttons uh, are obviously not of the exact same kind, the ones we have here are the real common ones. Like I said, you see them in a lot of different uh, places. You'll see them on a quirt, like a wooden quirt handle, on a tomahawk shaft, uh, clearly on a knife sheath. Here's a real close look at the leather. It's held up very well, very sturdy, thick leather that was used on this thing. Built to last. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that the knife feels great in hand. It had that heft, but it wasn't too heavy. You know, sometimes you pick up a knife, an antique knife, and it's, it just almost feels too light. Uh, this one was right in that sweet spot. And here's a surprise, because I don't normally come across this kind of thing when I'm researching one of these videos, of, you know, regarding a Native American tribe or people. So this is a painting from 1899 by Charles Russell of a Blackfoot woman, and it's entitled Waiting and Mad. So, of course, had to include it. And would love to know the backstory behind the actual painting. Anyway, final image here. Again, I love the look of this. I've never been able to handle one quite like it in person, so that was pretty neat, and I hope you enjoyed giving it a look. Late 1800s Blackfoot sheath and knife with commercial leather and brass tacks. Thanks.